Hi, uh, in this uh, video I would like to explain about resistances in parallel. As you can see, uh, I've got a realistic image created for you where you can see a real battery and it's got a positive and a negative terminal and we take a wire and uh, from the positive terminal and connect it to a junction plate, it's nothing but a grey looking rectangular plate. On the other side, uh, take a wire from the negative terminal and connect it once again to another junction plate on the other side. So now there is nothing in between the junction plates. Then we plug in two resistors side by side and those two resistors act like a bridge between the two junction plates. And this is what I mean by two resistors in parallel. So the current that comes from the positive terminal of the battery into the junction plate will cross those two resistors as if they are two bridges and flow to the other side and then the current will come back to the negative terminal. So the circuit has to be complete at all times. So let's take a battery of 12 volts and two resistances of 3 ohms each. Uh, this is an animation just to emphasize that the current has to get divided. The green arrow shows the current and the junction plate is clear so it will cross both the resistors, flow through the two resistors as if they are two bridges across a river and then the current after crossing the two resistors has to combine again and uh, become the main current. So I call this as a master current that divides itself into two small currents. If there are 10 resistors in parallel fixed on that junction plate then the current will get divided into 10 parts. Now how it gets divided depends upon the line of least resistance. The current likes to have less resistance so more current will flow through a resistor which is of low value of resistance and that matches with Ohm's law where I is equal to V by R. Smaller the R, higher the I. So let's look at some calculations. So we have the equivalent resistance put here 1 by R is 1 by R1 plus 1 by R2. If there are 10 resistances it will go up to 1 by R10. So do 1 by 3 plus 1 by 3 that will be 2 by 3 and therefore R will be 3 by 2 and that's 1.5 ohms. So that's the net effect of putting these two 3 ohm resistors in parallel. The net effect is only 1.5 ohms. Having said that, the master current, or the total current that flows through the circuit, is I is equal to V by R again as per Ohm's law. So when you divide 12 divided by the resistance of 1.5 ohms, you get 8 amps. Now this 8 amps gets divided into two parts and because we have equal resistances it should get divided into two equal parts. Now let's see whether that's really happening. So I1 or the current through the resistor 1 is again V by R and the voltage is 12 because across the junction plates the voltage is not changing there's same voltage so 12 divided by the resistance 3 ohms gives you 4 amps and again if you do I2, I2 will also be equal to V by R that's 12 by 3 again and that will be 4 amps. So 4 plus 4 is equal to 8 so it matches with our calculation. So this is the way we tackle a parallel circuit and the important thing to remember is that the voltage across those two junction plates has to be exactly 12 volts. So whatever resistance we connect between those two junction plates are like bridges across the river and they will all face exactly 12 volts. So this is how a circuit is represented. So you have um, those two junction plates which I have drawn in white color just to distinguish uh, on a circuit and uh, the resistance are drawn in standard fashion R1, R2 and therefore you have I1 flowing through R1 and I2 flowing through R2. Now you know how to do the calculation and I'm sure that uh, you can tackle any kind of uh, parallel circuit. Thank you and uh, have a great day.